Hi, welcome to Copia. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly get started and use Copia to make backups of files on your computer. Let's begin by launching the Copia UI application, which is over here. And as you can see, the, there's only a small icon that showed up in the menu bar, and we can use that to show the main window of Copia. Uh, the first thing we have to do is set up a repository. And there's many different providers we can choose. In this tutorial, we'll use a file system, but you can also use cloud providers of various kinds, SFTP server, WebDAV server. Uh, so let's pick file system. Let's create a repository directory on the desktop so that we can see what's going on. Let's open that. And this way we'll be able to see what's going on inside. Let's enter the path. And let's pick a password. For this demo, I'm going to use something very short, but normally you want to pick much longer and stronger password. Connect, and then Copia realized that the repository is empty, which means we need to initialize it first. So to do that, let's enter the password again. Click Initialize. And as you can see on the left, Copia has initialized the repository and created some files in it. Now we can go ahead and create snapshots. So to do it, let's pick directory, which will uh, which we want to have backed up. So let me start with downloads. We have a couple files there. And let's make a snapshot that's going to run once. And as you can see, Copia created uh, that snapshot and uploaded it in the repository on the left. And the snapshot size is 105 megabytes. Let's, let's add more directories. Let's say we want to backup movies. And let's say we want to backup them every hour. That was simple. Uh, we actually don't have too many movies, so that didn't take very long. And now let's take a backup of the projects directory, which has the source code of copy itself. It's going to be more interesting. Uh, let's make a snapshot. Let's say we want that one to be taken every day. OK, so the backup is done. It is 58 megabytes, and we can actually see what's in it by going in. Okay, so there's one snapshot of this directory, which was taken at 9.17. Uh, and when we enter it, we can actually see all the files that Copia has uploaded as part of that snapshot. Okay, let's do it again. Let's, let's make another snapshot of the same directory. And click Snapshot Now, and it basically uh, was instantaneous. It, it, it didn't take any time at all. If you go here, you will see that there is two snapshots now. They are actually identical, so Copia decided not to show them, but you can actually see that we have two snapshots taken at two different points in time. And what Copia has done is it has assigned automatic retention tags to each of the snapshots so that it will keep some number of hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and annual snapshots alive, and it will delete everything else so that we don't pollute the, drain, the repository. As you can see, the, the snapshots are identical. They have the same number of files and directories. They actually have the same identifier of the snapshot, uh, and this is how we know they are the same. Okay, so what if, we, what if we want to do something more sophisticated? Let's say we want to specify which exact files in these directories should be backed up. So to do that, copy allows you to specify policies we can go to the Policies tab, and you can see that uh, on the projects, there is a policy that specifies scheduling. And we can go ahead and edit that one. And here we can specify uh, various aspects of, of how to do snapshots of that particular directory. So for example, we can specify that this directory will only want to keep five monthly snapshots. So last five months of snapshots of, of that directory will be kept and no more. And we can go ahead and save it. Uh, we can also specify which files to include or exclude. And I know that Copia directory, for example, has some image files, which are kind of big. And we, let's say we don't want to back them up. So I can go here and specify that I don't want JPEG and SVG files. So yeah, those are big. And this is source code. So let's say we don't want it. And uh, we can also decide what to do in case of an error. If a file system directory or file cannot be read, we can either ignore it or, or fail the snapshot. We get to decide on compression. 
Uh, and you can also specify how frequently snapshots should be automatically made. And let's say we are we, we, we specify the ignore rules, save the policy, go to the snapshots again, and take a snapshot. And notice that the snapshot size right now is 58 megabytes. When I snapshot it again, it should actually drop. Yes, because we excluded all the image files, so the snapshot is only 48 megabytes now. You can click here, and you will see two distinct snapshots, because they now have different contents, so, so their identifiers, their root identifiers, are basically different. Uh, the newer snapshot only has 6,000 files, while the older snapshot had 8,600 files. So it's a big drop. And you may wonder, how do you retrieve files from, from snapshots? And that's, that's basically very easy. In the UI, you go and, and navigate to the file you want. And let's say we want to download the, the CMD file. And click on it, and it prompts you to save the file in the downloads directory which is basically how we can retrieve. Um, there's many more options. Those are outside of the scope of this quick tutorial. And thank you for watching. And if you have questions or if you're curious about more features of Copia, go to copia.io and give it a try. Thank you.